In this video, I'm gonna show you how to correct a common issue that we run into in landscape photography, and that's image distortion caused when the camera is tilted down while using a wide angle lens. Sweeping wide angle landscapes with a close foreground subject and a middle ground leading to something in the distance like trees or sea stacks or mountains is a common and effective photographic style. And to get even closer to our foreground, as well as move the horizon towards the upper third of the frame, we often end up tilting the camera down a little, which causes objects to lean outward. Lightroom and other software have tools for compensating for camera tilt, but they tilt the entire image, which transforms and cuts into our carefully composed foreground, usually in a way we don't want. You need to go to Photoshop to access the advanced transformation and healing tools that allow us to correct the perspective in the top part of the image while leaving the bottom part of the image the way it is, the way that we want it to be. So the technique I'm gonna show you is also covered in my new video course, which is called Photoshop Essentials for Outdoor Photographers. And this course contains nearly nine hours of lessons to help nature photographers master Photoshop and get the most out of its advanced capabilities. You can find out more about it right here, and I'll also link to more information below as well. So now let's head over to Photoshop and I'll show you how to correct this common problem. Now I'm gonna do the demos with these three vertical images because vertical images tend to be where the, the issue is the most pronounced, but it can also happen with a wide angle lens with the camera tilted down on horizontal images as well. So this same technique works with horizontal, same as it does with vertical. Now we're gonna start with this image, which I composed the foreground with my 16 millimeter focal length, with my camera pointing down a little bit so that I could get all the lines and features in the frame exactly how I wanted them. But where that was, ended up with my trees in the upper part of the image leaning outward. Now, a lot of times the issue won't be as bad as it is in these examples that I'm showing. So if you've got images with less distortion than this, you'll find the technique works even better. Now you can do this right on the background layer if you want. You just have to click the lock uh, to unlock the background. But I usually do it on a copy of the background because that gives me a backup or some insurance. And there's some other advantages to doing that that you'll see as we go. So you can duplicate the layer by clicking this button in the panel or right click on it and select duplicate layer. Say OK. And there's our copy layer. Now we're gonna do a transformation or actually a warp to this layer. And you could do that on a smart object, which would make it future proof. Unfortunately, we also need to do a content aware fill. You can't content aware fill smart objects. So really we need to just leave this as a regular pixel layer and we'll just have to get it right the first time. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the background layer for now. And then to do the transformation or actually the warp, I'm gonna start by typing Control or Command T to enter free transform mode. And then I'll click this button to enter warp mode. And there's other ways to get into the warp mode, but that's the way I like to do it. Now, before I do any warping, I'm gonna come up here to the split options and I'm gonna choose the horizontal split. And what that allows me to do is drag down a line that will split the image into two parts. I'm gonna park it here just right above that foreground element there. And now when I transform, I'm gonna transform the top part of this image and leave the bottom part unaltered. I need to get my trees that are leaning out to be vertical. So I just grab a corner handle and just pull it over. I wanna keep it up above the top of the canvas up here, but pull it over until those trees look like they are straight up and down, something like that. And same thing on this side. I've got some trees leaning out there. So I'm gonna pull this one in and get those trees leaning straight up and down as well. And then these handles you can use to further fine tune if you need to. I wanna keep those again above the image area, something like that. And it can be useful to zoom in and just make sure that you've got everything straight up and down. And it looks like I've done a pretty good job there. So I'll go ahead and zoom back out. But if I didn't get them just right, I could enter warp mode again and adjust them a little bit more. Okay, 
Now that we've got the image warped and we've made that uh, perspective correction, the next thing we need to do is fill in these blank corners. So to do that, I'm gonna hold down the control or the command key on a Mac and click on that layer, and that will select the pixel area, the image area. But what I actually want selected is those blank areas. So I need to invert the selection, which can be done with the inverse button right here in the panel, or I can hold down control shift or command shift and I, and that will now invert the selection and then select those corners. Now I need to next expand those selections so that it's overlapping into the pixel area a little bit. Otherwise, when I fill, it'll leave a little thin line there that I don't want. So I come up to select and come down to modify and choose expand. And usually expanding anywhere five to 10 pixels is all you need. So eight's fine, I'll click okay. That selection has been expanded. And the next thing I need to do is content aware fill those selected areas. That's easy to get to content aware fill here in the panel. It's just the CAF button. Or if you're using the menus, you gotta come up to the edit menu and come down here to content aware fill. And that enters the content aware fill task space. And I have everything set to auto and the defaults. And if it looks like it's done a good job filling with those settings, then I won't change it. But if I need to modify it with the brush to remove some of the selected areas, because obviously I don't need to sample from this foreground area down here to fill in the sky. So I could do that if I needed to, but to me, it looks really good. So I'm just gonna uh, commit to that fill. It's gonna output to the current layer. I already copied the background, so I'm just doing this to that copy layer I already made. And there is that fill. I can deselect the selection, and let's just zoom in to 100% and see how it looks. So, yep, all my trees are looking nice and vertical and straight. The landscape's all straight. And that filled in area, ah, there's a little bit of area here it didn't do a great job on that I could work with uh, the, uh, the clone stamp tool or something else to clean that up. But everything else looks really good. And to compare, I can turn that background back on again. And then if we turn the top layer off, that's how it was. And that's how it is, much better. And notice that it didn't transform my foreground at all. Okay, let's go over to this image and give it a try. Now this one, my camera wasn't tilted down quite so much. So these C stacks are leaning out, but not quite super severely, but I still wanna make a, you know, a minor correction to those. So the basic procedure again is duplicate the background. I'm gonna do it with the panel this time because it's faster. And then I'm going to control or command T to enter transform. I'll go to warp. I'll grab the horizontal split. I'm gonna park that one right in this region of the image. And now I can just pull this corner over. Whoop. I should have turned off that background layer because we're seeing that layer underneath, but that's okay, we get the idea. I'll go ahead and put that somewhere about there. Pull this one over somewhere about there. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good, pretty vertical. I might pull this slightly more this way, just trying to get this thing to look like it's not leaning out. But I think I'm pretty happy with that, so I'll commit to that, warp. And I'll turn off the background so we can see where our empty edges are. And control or command click to select the pixel area. Control shift or command shift I or the inverse button to invert the selections. Come up to select, modify, expand, eight pixels. Go to content aware fill. See how the automatic fill does. Again, it looks pretty good. Uh, I wonder though, just out of curiosity, if I go to a custom selection and use the paintbrush here to just select myself where I want it to sample from, which is all through here, but not down into the land at all. Let's see if that does a better job. Yeah, I think it looks fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit to that. Deselect, and I think it looks great. Let's turn on the background layer. So there's the before, 
There's the after. Now in this one, I love what it's doing for the sea stacks and the landscape back here, but I actually don't like that it's compressing my clouds the way it is. So this is another advantage of doing it on a copy of the background. I can now add a mask to this layer. And with a black paintbrush, I can mask out the transformation in the upper part of the sky. So I get my clouds looking the way they were. And now all I'm doing is just transforming the sea stacks themselves. And that all blends together really well. Okay, let's go to one more example just to beat this into the ground. Now this one's a little tougher because I've got lots of trees that are leaning out. And this side I think is gonna be okay because there's some space along the edge. This one's gonna be a little tougher because the trees are going right up to the edge of the image, but we're gonna try it anyway. So let's give it a go. So I'll go ahead and duplicate the background and enter free transform, controller command T, go to warp mode split down to probably right about here. Bottom of the trees is where I want to go. And I just want to drag these over. Oh, forgot to get rid of my background image again, but that's okay. Just want this tree right here to be straight up and down. And now I want these trees to be straight up and down. So I'll bring that one in and I can further work with this in here. Make sure everything's looking as straight as possible. This tree's got a little bit of a natural curve to it, so we'll leave that as it is. But just try to get that all looking as good as possible. I think right in there is probably the right spot, so I'll commit to it. And again, turn off that background layer so we can see our empty spaces. Control or Command, click on the layer to select it, invert it, expand the selection, and go to Content Aware Fill. Now, we've got it set on Custom. Uh, let's try Auto just to see what that'll do. And the Auto actually did pretty well. It looks great on this side like I thought. This side, not so good. And I know from experience, because I actually practiced with this image a few times before making the video, that I really couldn't ever get it to do this part correctly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and commit to that and deselect. And then I would need to come in here, either crop it or do a different transformation to kind of pull that out or do some careful cloning in this area to kind of fix that. But other than that, it all looks good. And let's compare the before and after. So that's before, trees leaning out. That's after the transformation. Yeah, it looks much better. And again, didn't affect my foreground composition. So Lightroom and other editing applications keep getting better, but Photoshop continues to provide the most advanced tools available. To be able to do this type of complex perspective correction and content aware fill, as well as things like exposure blending, focus blending, luminosity masking, and a whole lot more than Photoshop is the tool you need. So I hope that technique will come in handy for you. Thanks as always for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions or ideas you'd like to add in. All the best, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.